So in this equation, we are told to sketch on separate diagrams the graphs of y equals minus 3x plus c, where c is a positive constant, and y equals 1 of x plus 5. So without further ado, let's go. So to sketch this linear graph, what I would personally draw, I'll draw a nice table here, call this x and y, and I'll just plot some values. So I'll always use when x is 0 and y is 0. Why? Because this shows you the points of intersection with the x and y axes. So when x is 0, what do we get? When this is 0, we're left with y equals c. And then another one, when y is 0, we're left with minus 3x plus c equals 0. So plusing 3x across and dividing by 3, we should get c over 3. Easy, so plot this across. So this tells you when x is 0, y is c. And here, when y is 0, x is 3 over c. So let's just say 3 over c is here for convenience sake. Okay? It doesn't have to be accurate. Then you just draw a straight line. Of course, do have a ruler, not like this. Okay, and that's it. Now for this one, this is just a case of drawing 1 over x and raising it up 5 levels. So I suppose this was a typical inverse graph, which is 1 over x. To raise it 5 levels higher, we just have to think of the symptom to be somewhere here. Suppose the symptom is over here. Say, let's call this one 5. So this tells you that now, with this new asymptote, we should sketch the graph properly. So we're going to have something like this. And again, then continue. And that's it. Of course, we need to see where his x axis And we know that his x axis is at this point here. In other words, when y equals 0, this is the same as x axis line. So when y equals 0, what do we get? So matching this equation at y equals 0, we should have, of course, 0 equals 1 over x plus 5. Solving this, we can have minus 5 equals 1 over x. Taking the reciprocal and thus x equals minus 1 over 5. So this coordinate here is minus 1 over 5. And that's it. So this is the asymptote, um, the point of intersection of the y x axis. So let's move on to part b now. Yeah, part b. So according to part b, we're given an equation, the same equation, and we're known that where c is a positive constant, this equation meets the curve y equals 1 over x plus 5 at two distinct points. Now, what does this mean, two distinct points? This means we're looking at two real points. So in other words, we need to consider the discriminant. Discriminant. And this implies that because it's two real roots, we're gonna have we're gonna be using b squared minus 4ac and it has to be greater than zero because this implies that within the quadratic formula there has to be positive roots. If it's negative, then there's no roots. If it's single root, one point, then it'll be equal to zero. So Let's try and produce it. So knowing that these two meet, this means that this equation equals this equation. So we're going to have, in this case, 3x minus 3x plus c equals 1 over x plus 5. Now in this case, what you want to do is multiply x across to you know clear the fraction. So multiplying x, we're going to get minus 3x squared plus cx equals 1 plus 5 x now plusing three, now now moving everything to the, to one side to have a nice quadratic expression we should have so plusing across we're gonna have zero equals three x squared five x take away cx can be factorized as five take away c x and then of course plus one oops plus one and that's it now using the discriminant calling this part your b, this 3 is your a, and c is your 1. Therefore, b squared minus 4ac should equal 5 minus c all squared minus 4 times 12 times 1. Oops, 4 times, uh, somehow mentally solved it. 4 times 3 times 1 be bigger than zero so of course this part is 12 huh. 
So yeah, for some reason I was doing in my head the whole solution. So therefore we get 5 minus C squared greater than 12. And that's it guys, that's really it. Now let's move on to part C. For this part, now we need to find the range of possible values of C using the equation we just deduced. So just treat this as a equal sign, okay? Then pretty much we just need to solve the values of C and attach inequalities. So using the equal sign, I would say, rewrite this as 5 minus C squared equals 12. So now square root on both sides, you get 5 again minus C equals plus minus square root 12. Here we could say square root 12 equals what? Well, breaking it down, breaking down the third. We know 12 is made of 4 and 3, so root 4 and root 3, which root 4 is of course 2, so this is just 2, root 3, easy. Now solving for c, plus and c plus and subtracting this, we should get c equals 5 minus, well plus minus actually, 2 root 3. So this is your points of intersection on the curve. Now another thing we can also do, we also need to find out where exactly it hits on the y-axis. So before we get it, let's draw the function out. So we should have a curve a bit like this. So notice I obviously expanded on this side. It's because this solution is all positive. How do we know? Well, we should know that 2 root 3, root 3 is between 1 and 2 whole numbers. So imagine it was root 4. 2 times 2 would be 4, which is still less than 5. 5 to root 4 would be on the positive. So we, let's just say this term here was 5 minus 2 root 3. Let's say here is 5 plus 2 root 3. So if we're going to sketch this nice curve, it looks something like this. And it cuts over here. Uh -huh. Not the best curve, but pretty much where we're going. So what is this value here? Well, this is just the wind set. And this is found by pretty much expanding this fully. So let's expand this equation to find out what that value is. So 5 minus C squared equals 12. Expanding this, what do we get? So we should get 25 times 5 minus C and then C minus 5 should give you minus 10C plus C squared equals 12. And now subtracting 12 across we should get 13 minus 10C plus C squared equals 0. That's it. So when y equals 0, the, when the axis y x, x is equal 0, we should get intercept of 13. And this is our y intercept. Lastly, the intervals now. So how do we know where the range of values are? Well, it tells you here. When a value is positive, in other words, greater sign, we always consider following the curve upwards. So we're looking at the, the end of the, uh, the, when the curve is above the line, which is this part. So we can see it's right here. Also know that initially we know that C is positive. So this means it can only be up to here. And of course this goes on forever. So from zero to this term. So therefore, because C is positive, we take this area and the rest of this term. So I should actually make it more clear. It's actually like this. That's it. And this goes all the way, guys. So our range of C values will be between zero and five minus two or three. So we say, our interval is between this term, so c less than 5 minus 2 root 3, or c is bigger than this term, c greater than 5 plus 2 root 3. And that's it guys, this is pretty much our inequalities. So let me know how it goes and see if you've got the same result. But anyway guys, ciao now and see you soon. Bye.